Right, thanks. So, um, yeah, I'll just give you a quick talk about um, JavaScript or microcontrollers. So, uh, what's a microcontroller? It's more usually a small computer that's entirely on one chip. Um, sometimes they're absolutely mini minuscule. I mean, this isn't the smallest one, but it's just three millimeters long. Um, they're absolutely yeah, tiny, very, very cheap, very low power. I mean, they'll run off a battery for, for months. And, you know, it's one of the reasons why you hardly ever have a hard on off switch on anything anymore. It's always just a push button and it probably goes to a microcontroller somewhere that handles all the power for the rest of the product you're using. Um, so, I mean, one of the reasons uh, they use so much is they make product development really, really easy. Um, you know, it's much easier to tweak the software than to actually tweak the hardware after it's out. Um, and that makes them really good for DIY as well. So much stuff is digital now that you just connect like three, four wires and you're done. And whatever device you've got, you can instantly make work. So traditionally, um, these things are designed for industry. And you've got some guy who spends, you know, spends his whole working day doing this stuff. And it doesn't matter if the tool's a bit rubbish because he just has to learn it and he's got weeks to do it. Um, so, I mean, yeah, historically, bad platform support, not very good documentation. Things are a lot better now with like the maker movement and Arduinos just, you know, moaning through it. But it's still a surprisingly bad IDE considering the amount of people that use it and there's no debugging. You've, you've got to, you know, hand code any debugging you want. Um, and it's a black box, literally. You write code, you run it. If it doesn't work, you have no idea what's gone wrong unless you write code to instrument it. And in fact, after all of that, it may not be a software problem at all. It may be something you've wired up wrong. So why would you use JavaScript? Um, well, if you run it on the microcontroller, then there's no tool chain at all, so it's easy. You just plug it straight in and you can talk to it. Um, and obviously, you, know, you, can, you can inspect variables, you can change code while it's running. No seg faults that are just gonna randomly stop it working. And you, know, you don't get call dumps on the microcontroller. So if it stops while it's out there, you have no idea what went wrong. You just know it didn't work. Um, yeah, it's well known and quite importantly, it's quite easy to make event-based. And the events on hardware are really, really good because you know, it correlates really, really well with, um, with what you're doing in the real world. When you press button, do this, wait a second, turn it off again, stuff like that. Um, and obviously in embedded programming, you'd use interrupts a lot. Um, but you don't have any of the pain of that. Um, you, you don't have all the same advantages, but you don't have to deal with preemption or kind of undefined behavior if it, if it hits at just that instruction where you were writing the second half of a, a word. Um, so yeah, easy to combine. Um, you can get multitasking with low overhead, and that's pretty important because I'll come to it in a bit, but the, the amount of memory you have is massively smaller than you would have on a PC. Um, and you just can't afford to do multitasking on one of these little microcontrollers. Um, and power saving is excellent because the interpreter, it knows what it's doing, it knows it can go to sleep if there's nothing on, and it also knows what it's going to respond to. So it knows how much it can sleep. It knows whether it's got to listen to serial communications or whether it's just watching a pin or whether it can put itself right the way to sleep and wake up on a real-time clock. Um, so. I mean, it's a Node conference. Why wouldn't we just use Node.js on this? And the answer really is that it's a completely different beast. Node was just not meant for this at all. Um, you know, so it's got a million times less RAM and about 10 million times less storage. You know, and they're, you know, they're just figures picked out of the air, but it's, it's pretty close, really. Um, so we could just add more RAM, and a bunch of people have done that, and they've done it very well. Uh, Tessel, which some of you might have heard of, is something that released uh, about a month ago on Dragon Innovation. Um, they don't run Node, and they don't have an operating system that will get in the way, and they've got 32 meg of RAM. So they're quite good, and there's obviously Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone, which do an excellent job and run Node.js. Um, but they are bigger, they are more expensive, and they draw an awful lot more power because they're full Linux PCs with all the stuff that goes with that. So if you want to run them off a battery, unless it's a car battery, it's not going to last for that much longer than a day. Um, if that. So if you go back to microcontrollers then, um, there's this big difference because on a PC you might roughly read all your memory in a second. On a microcontroller you can read all of your memory in a millisecond. So you've got a lot less, you know, a million times less RAM, but you've got a thousand times more CPU for that RAM. So the way you write the interpreter changes completely. You're basically trying to save all the memory you can save 
um, in, yeah, and, and it doesn't matter too much that you spend a little bit of extra CPU time doing that. So just to bring this home, um, 8K of RAM is that much, which is 50 pixels by 50 pixels in 24 bits per pixel, which is not a great deal if you imagine you're trying to get all your program, all your data into that. Um, and we really pushed the boat out with the Esprino board, and we've got 48K, which is that much, which is, I think it's about 100, well, it's 128 by 128, which again is, is not a great deal. Um, so for the Esprino software, it's basically purpose-built. Um, it's open source in C, it's around 60,000 lines, and it's on, on GitHub right now, you can just go and get it. Um, there's no operating system, there's not even malloc. Um, but because of that, it can run in tiny amounts of RAM. Um, and what it does is you can program it just via serial port, but no one's got a serial port anymore. So um, it does USB, and you just plug it in, and it pretends it's a USB serial port <coughs> dongle. So you just plug it in, pretty much any computer's got the drivers pre-installed, and it's just there. You connect to it with the serial terminal, which you probably already had, and uh, just start writing code. Um, internally, it's a bit weird. It's got fixed-sized memory blocks, and they're all chained together to make strings, or you know, if, if you want something bigger than all fit in that memory block, it just puts it up. Um, you don't get memory fragmentation because of it, or you do, but it doesn't matter. Um, and it's allocating new memory is basically order one, because you just, you just go and grab it. It doesn't matter which one you get. Um, there's a resource, sorry, there's reference counting, um, which will kind of, with very low overhead again, get rid of unused variables and stuff. Um, for the very few cases where you do create a recursive loop, if it does ever run out of memory, it does do a mark sweep garbage collector. So most of the time, it's very, very responsive. You know exactly what it's going to do. It's only if you actually kind of intentionally fill it up with these recursive loops that it'll have to do garbage collection. Um, and the really weird thing is it executes from source. Um, I mean, you saw from that image, there's no room for bytecode at all, um, as well as source. And you want the source in there because you want to be able to log into it and, and edit the source code. Um, so yeah, it's, it's this kind of weird arrangement, which is kind of more or less unique amongst JavaScript interpreters. Uh, the Esperino board, um, which is down here, I'll show you in a second. Um, the software's actually been out for about a year, um, but the issue is that a lot of people don't want to have to try and compile it or try and find the right image, order the correct board, um, there are millions of different ones out there, install the software to flash it, do all the rest of it. Um, so instead, we just did this board, um, which you just plug it in and it just works. So it's got 48K of RAM, there's loads of I.O. Uh, there are, I think, about 48 I.O. pins. There's a massive bunch of analogs, um, pulse width modulated, SPI, R squared, C, all these, these different things. Um, and there's also a slightly weird thing which a lot of Arduino boards don't have, which is the ability to solder on another chip. Because very often you'll just want to drive a motor or um, yeah, you want powered outputs for relays or something, and you don't want to have to buy another shield when you can just buy a board for you know, less than a pound and solder it on. Um, sorry, a chip. Um, yeah, and the really important thing with this is that it runs off batteries for weeks. Um, it draws about 1 point, sorry, it draws 0.2 milliamps um, normally when it's kind of sitting there waiting for input. So it's, it's really pretty good compared with Raspberry Pi, which it varies, but you know, you're talking about 100, 200 milliamps, depending on the one. Um, so we recently put this on Kickstarter. Uh, we've got about 1,600 backers, and we're aiming to get the boards out by January. I mean, hopefully before. So that's it, and I thought I'd try and give you a live demo of it. Um, so we'll see what happens. So, oh, right. So uh, there's a web app. You can do it with a normal serial terminal, but this one's got a cool little addition for the webcam. So if we just do this, I hope. Wonderful. OK. So it appears on a USB COM port, which this one's TTYACM. Uh, you just click Connect. It's automatically detected, and you're in there. Uh, you can write code, I hope. And that's now executed on that board, and the results returned. Now, you could, it doesn't have to be USB. You can solder on the Bluetooth module, and you can just program it completely wirelessly. 
Um, there's an app already for Android phones and tablets that just lets you do that. So, um, for instance, I can try and turn on the LED now. So it's got commands which are a lot like Arduino. Um, so if I say LED one, one. And you just see in there, lit up. Um, so we can do lots of different things with this. Now, you're probably wondering why there's just a bin sitting on the, on the stage. Um, <laughs> and I thought that the real reason for doing the Esprino board was that um, I wanted something that you'd actually properly use for doing projects that you might keep around. Um, so often you get a Raspberry Pi and you hack something up and you're like, OK, I've done that. Now let's just use it in something else. Um, so like for home projects, this is something that was a problem that I had that you can fix quite easily with this. So the issue is you've got a green bin, you're doing the cooking, and you pick up all the leftover food and you go to put it in the bin on the work surface, but you can't because it's a pedal bin and your feet are down there and you're not standing on the work surface. So this is a bin that automatically opens. Um, we've got a, uh, you can just see by the side of the board, there's a little uh, ultrasonic sensor. And the sensor costs, I mean, they're about three pounds off eBay if you look. Um, they're quite simple, you give them a little pulse and they give you a pulse back. And the length of that pulse is the time it takes the sound to go out and come back. So it's basically telling you how far away the nearest object is. Um, and inside this bin, we have a little model aircraft servo. Um, and there's just one wire coming out of that again. So we'll start off and we'll, we'll try and open the bin. Um, now, the easy thing to do with that is, um, if any of you have done anything with model aircraft servos, um, they're actually digital. The, the length of the pulse that you give them determines where they go. It's a pulse between one and two milliseconds. So if you give them a pulse of, um, a, well, if one millisecond, they'll go all the way over, and then the other, they'll, they'll go right over that way. So if I um, pulse it now, uh, so it's actually on pin B13, um, and pulse it high for, we'll say one millisecond, because I think this is the one that opens the bin. And there was this tiny little noise of it moving a bit because it, it only keeps moving for a fraction of a second at a time, and you have to keep sending it the pulses. So if I keep doing this, it'll slowly push it up. So, <laughs> so now um, we might want to do, um, we want this to happen all the time, obviously. We, we, you know, we don't want to keep having to do this. So if I create a verbal call position, And, and just step up here. Again, this is all happening, you know, this isn't anything special with the web app, it's just the web app's a terminal. So, you know, the command history, all of that's done on the chip. So, uh, we call this every 50 times a second, 20 milliseconds. Right, so it's done something. And then, obviously, you just up and down again. So, um, yeah, now we might want to use the ultrasonics. So what we want to do is we want to measure the length of this pulse. Um, now, I mean, it is JavaScript, so, you know, it's, and it's, it's actually interpreted. It's not in, um, not JIT compiled. So it's not that quick. So what happens is every time you get an event, uh, a pin changes state, that's done with a bit of code that's been written that runs on the interrupt and it timestamps it exactly. So actually you can measure lengths, lengths of pulses and when things happen very, very accurately, even though the JavaScript isn't running as fast as you'd expect. So um, if we create two functions, we'll do one that happens when the ping goes high, one that happens when it goes low. So um, you get a thing back. Um, And then we do another one for when it goes down. Sorry about the noise in this. Uh, and then we call set watch, which is a, a thing specific to Esprino, but it, um, it just runs JavaScript 
escape function when something happens. And the trigger was on A0, I think. So we say repeat equals true so that it, um, every time this happens, it, it keeps functioning there, keeps calling it. And we just say edge, column, uh, edge is rising. And we'll do the same again, but for P down. And now we want to uh, send a pulse to this so that it, it sets it off. And hopefully we'll get something returned. Um, so if we do digital pulse again. And we do it for quite a small amount of time this time. And we get an answer back. Which is not quite what I was expecting. But, uh, oh, damn it. <laughs> so I'll just do this again. Right. So yeah, something is happening there. Um, <laughs> I'll create another function, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll just light the LED up, maybe different colors when something different happens. So um, uh, no, that's not what we want to do at all. And now we'll, because it's not printing, we'll just um, do that digital pulse, you know, every 100 milliseconds or something. If I can find out where I put it. So I hope if I go close to this now, it'll light the LED up, maybe. So obviously now it's, it's going to be quite easy to take this and um, change the position. So we can say, um, How much time? Okay, great. Um, so again, you can do things. You know, you could uh, have a add a timeout here just to set it down, or do all kinds of different things. And I mean, the code I've written is is rubbish, but that's half the fun of this. You know, um, you can hack something together really, really quickly, um, and hopefully, you can have a lot of fun doing it. And when you've done it, you just type save, um, and it saves it into Flash. Yep, uh, <laughs> and it saves it into Flash so that the next time you apply power, it'll keep working. So, you know, I can, uh, if I go now and I just plug a battery into it. Then, you know, there we are. And it keeps working. So, um, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do with this. Uh, on the website, we're, we've got quite a few tutorials, projects and stuff already. Um, the board itself is about 20 quid, but you can actually, you can get boards from elsewhere and you can flash the code on them if, if you're that bothered. Um, you know, it's, it's not locked to the board that we're selling here. We just think it's a nice board. Um, so I probably rushed through this quite a lot, but does anyone have any questions? Oh. Yeah? Well, then where can we buy this from? Uh, so it's, 
Uh, yeah, it's been kickstarted. It, we're hoping to actually get them sent out slightly before Christmas. Um, you can pre-order them from our website, but we're hoping to try and get distributors and things um, after that time anyway. Cool, thank you. So, no problem. Uh, yeah? Um, so you've got this nice UI for floating. Do you have to do it through the UI? And where, where is the UI running? Is it running off the board or are you on um, no, so this, uh, the UI is actually, um, the, the command history, all of that stuff is done on the chip. Um, so it's just sending characters backwards and forwards. This nice UI is, um, it's, it's just, you know, it's hacked up as a Chrome web app. But you can just use Minicom or Picocom or Hyperterminal, whatever. Um, so with the memory, like how many of these programs would fit on the... Ah, okay. So, um, it, it is, uh, I mean, you do have 40,000 bytes of RAM to play with. Um, the percentage of that that you can use <laughs> is, so th th this is right, you know, so you can, you can use modules if, if you want to, but if you use modules, you're really quickly going to run out of space. Um, you're talking, I mean, you know, you're talking 4,000 lines if on average you've got 10 characters a line, which is not unreasonable. Um, you can always minify your code, which will actually make it faster because it's executing <laughs> from source. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyone else? I think that's all the time we have questions for. Yeah, brilliant.